after all the excitement of the preseason and the positives we saw under Eric Ten Hag, it's all pretty much irrelevant once we kick off against Brighton on Sunday. The Premier League season starts. In this week, I've got a lot of build-up content coming. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. And I'm kicking off with this video today, taking a full look and an analysis of our squad, not only with the best 11 I think we've got under Eric Ten Hag, but also looking at the second 11, looking at the strength in depth and the squad that we've got that we need this season. Jeez, we've got nine games coming in October. We haven't got the strength in depth to switch players in and out. We're going to really struggle. Spoiler alert, we probably will struggle. We need more in. That's what I'm going to run through and analyze in this video. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Please, if you are new to the channel, I'd love to have you on board here. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. I'd love to have you as part of the community. But let's get straight into it. In this video, I'm going to run through the entire first team squad, speak about every single player and analyze where their positions lie. And I'm going to put it inside this. Spoiler alert. Well, it's not spoiler alert. There's no point having a conversation really about the goalkeepers. It's David De Gea and Heaton is his backup. Dean Henderson has gone out on loan. That's just what it's going to be. And I think that, that should be fine for Man United this season. There's people who still feel that Heaton's not going to be good enough as a backup goalkeeper. He could well just be another Romero. He seems happy enough to be a second goal, second goalkeeper for United. And until he makes mistakes, I, I'm not going to say, say otherwise. Uh, uh, we're not going to go and spend money. If we we're going to get one, maybe it would have been Sam Johnston on a free. But I don't think we're going to be getting a backup goalkeeper. And we've got far bigger priorities elsewhere. Jeez. Starting in defence, right? Let's go to left back. And of course, the left back conversation revolves around two players. Tyrell Malasia there and Luke Shaw. Now, you can let me know in the comments below who you think should be Manchester United's first choice left back this season. But for me, from what I've seen in pre-season and the way that he has played and the way that he has settled in, that's my personal choice. Is Malasia going in above Luke Shaw? Uh, maybe that might be controversial. And there might be some of you in the comments who go, hold on, Sam. Why would you do that? Luke Shaw, blah, blah, blah. You can have your arguments. But for me, what I'm seeing in Malasia in the build-up play, him in... He knows how to play that inverted fullback far more naturally than Luke Shaw does. Now, Luke Shaw can force his way back, to, back into contention. But for me, I'm okay with that. And I think we've got strength in depth in that position. I'm quite happy at that one, actually. If we were to move on to left centre-back, I think we know full well who's going to be our first choice this season. In my opinion, it's not really an argument. It's not really a conversation. And I think it's pretty obvious who are first four. I, I'm going to put them all in here. Maybe it's not obvious per se. But I think, in my opinion, it's pretty obvious who our four first choice centre-backs are. I've spoken about that this morning on the, uh, the live show that we had. But I think it's going to be Martinez and Maguire. I don't think this will be the starting eleven against Brighton because I don't think that um, Martinez are going to be fit enough for that game. But I think over the course of the season, there's obvious concerns about, Mag about Varane and his fitness record, about Maguire and his capability in the high line, about Lindelof and the pace that he has for the high line too. Martinez is the only one of those four that I think you're looking at and saying, I haven't really got any questions or too many concerns about him. I think he'll be good. By the way, it's the first time I've seen Lissandro Martinez on the profile on the website. Mm, love that. But for me, that's what I think should happen, which of course leaves a whole load of extras. Eric Bai, I think, should be going out on uh, ideally being sold, but I think loaned anyway. And uh, I seem to have a conversation and argument every day with somebody who feels that he should be inside that squad there ahead of one of those four. That was going to happen. It would have happened. He would have played more minutes on the preseason tour. Bai, a player who's been ravaged by injuries, a player with so much promise who I think will go on to have a very decent career outside of Manchester United, but I think it will be outside of Manchester United. And Phil Jones, I think we're just waiting to sell him. He's, he's not in my conversations at any point, and I don't think he'll be in anybody's. But that's a simple one. And of course, down there, you can have conversations about Tuanzebe. I mean, you could potentially put Tuanzebe or Bai down here as like fifth or sixth choice centre-backs, but I'm not doing that. I'm just doing first choice and backup. Now, if we're moving on to right back, I suppose there's a question to be had here, really. Because we all know full well who the first choice left right back for Manchester United is going to be next season. I think he, it's obvious from how much he's played. I think it's I think he's played pretty well. Delo has impressed me, I would say. Impressed me in the preseason tour. Didn't expect him to play as good as he did. I think he did well. But who's his backup? I don't really know. 
because uh, as far as we can see, I don't, I don't even think Ethan Laird's on this um, list here, but Ethan Laird will be the, the, the outstanding choice for a lot of you, not just based off what we saw yesterday, but based off what sort of player he is. But effectively, it feels like it's going to be a bit of a toss-up between wan and Williams. Now, I don't particularly know about Williams. I mean, was he even, I don't even think he was on the tour, was he? If he was on the tour, I don't remember. I've seen I, I apologise to Williams if he was there. I don't remember seeing him. And wan he was there, but you hardly saw him. wan for me, if we're, if we're looking at the importance of fullbacks inside this system, we know what the importance of fullbacks are inside Eric Ten Hag's system. I have definitely have concerns that are, of when. It's not a case of if. When Delo gets injured and he can't play, because he can't play every three days, replacing him with a right back who does the same sort of job, I think we'll struggle with that this season. Maybe Williams can be better than I think he's going to be there. And maybe he's going to get loaned out. Don't know. Haven't really heard anything about Williams. But that's probably the strength in depth that we got in the back five. If I'm looking at concerns. The main concern I've got there is probably... Uh, I would probably say right centre-back and right back replacement is probably the two biggest concerns I would have about that about whether Maguire can play in that high line consistently well about Varane's fitness and about the backup to Delo. that I would say is the is the weaknesses that we got inside that part of the squad you can let me know what you think about that and of course there's names that I haven't included that I haven't even mentioned Alex Tellers that's how little I rate Alex Tellers genuinely I've just not mentioned him there at all He's third choice left back behind Malasia and Shaw. If we can find a club for him, let's find the club for him, please. Pedemengi, I think he's going out on loan. Uh, Fernandez is already out on loan. Guanzebe, I don't think he's going to get chances. I think we should loan or sell him. And up here, Phil Jones, you know, I think there. And Eric Bai, we just had a conversation about. That's everybody covered inside there. Let's move on to the midfield. And let's move on to this position here, which, of course, is the biggest crux of this United team. The Achilles heel, the kryptonite, whatever you want to call it our weakness it's massively our weakness and this is exactly why we're going after De Jong and especially when you look at this man look look at that midfield jeez man come on United still do we know who the first choice there is it's going to be Fred I think Fred will be a decent player for United this season but of course Fred on his own is not enough inside that role Fred should be the backup and an excellent backup he would be but I think if we're looking at genuinely what we're probably likely to see there it's probably a toss-up between those three inside that position. Fred with McTominay and Garner. Now, McTominay, I didn't think he played well in the preseason tour. I know McTominay's levels. We all know McTominay's levels. I think he'll be a good squad player for United, but I don't think it'll ever really be anything that more than that. Really. I don't think he'll be... Come at... Maybe it'll be... maybe Fletcher's a fair comparison. But James Garner, we saw it in the... In, in the time that he had in the preseason, it's such a shame that he got injured, man, on the first day of preseason. I think Garner would have forced his way far more into the conversation if he had more chances. But I think they're realistically the options we've got there. And whether you play McTominay or Garner as the backup to Fred, well, that's a debate that you can have in the comments. But I think that's pretty much what it is there. In terms of this position, realize actually, I know they have got in there. There he is. Hello, beautiful. I'm definitely putting him in there. Straight in that starting 11, straight in our best team, Christian Eriksen. I don't really think there's a doubt. Ah, that's, that's my opinion. You can, you can disagree on that. But I don't particularly think that's a doubt. Eriksen is definitely the first choice in there. Like, we've seen it the first couple of games in the preseason. No doubt it's only going to get better and better and better as the season goes on. But I think Eriksen should be there. And we should probably see Donny van der Beek as the backup to him, which I'm, which I'm fine with. Donny... Uh, not particularly fine with how Donny played in the preseason. I'll be completely honest. I think he left a lot to be desired. But I would probably put Donny down there. I mean, we all know who's playing there. I would just say Donny... Van der Beek is... He's... I don't know, man. A lot of the Van der Beek fans are surely realised at this point. I don't know. He's had plenty of opportunities this preseason. He really has. And I don't think he's really taken to them that well. In fact, that would be a bit unfair for me to just completely dismiss Hannibal. So I'll probably just put Hannibal down there. Down as a back. I don't think he'll be the the, the um, first choice backup to Bruno. But if we're looking at the overall strength of the squad, I think Hannibal's more likely to play in that position than anywhere else, really. That's what I think so anyway. So Hannibal, I'm going to put there. In terms of Pellistri, I've got him down as a winger, so we don't need to have a conversation about him there. And the same goes for Ahmad. And that's everybody else covered there. But you can just see 
the weakness. There's, there's weakness, but apart from Bruno playing up there and probably Ericsson being a good alternative to Bruno, I'm, I'm all right with the number 10 position, but I'm just looking at these going... Uh, burp, burp, burp. Alarm bells. Alarm bells indeed. We need more in midfield, man. Young. This, we need the young, man. But that's what I've gone for in the strength in depth inside that midfield and what we kind of don't have, really. And let's move on to the attacking positions, right? We go down to the forwards down here. There's quite a few names there. Of course there are. Now, on the left-hand side, I think it's quite obvious that Marcus Rashford's going to be our number one choice. I think Rashford had a pretty decent preseason. It wasn't uh, mind-blowingly good. It wasn't terrible. I think he had some great performance. He's had some decent performances. I think Rashford will continue to get better as the season goes on. And I think we all kind of knew it anyway, but yesterday just sort of proved the point. Garnacho should certainly be the backup to, to Cristiano Ronaldo, to Marcus Rashford on that left-hand side. The excitement that he brought whilst being on the pitch was fantastic. He's a teenager. He's got so much more development. And I think Eric Ten Hag is the perfect coach to develop him. So I'm definitely going to go for Alejandro Garnacho as the backup to Marcus Rashford. And if we go back here and let's have a look at who else we've got. We've got Martial. I'll, I'll speak about the centre forwards. Uh, but on the right hand side, we've got Jaden Sancho. We've got Elanga. We've got Chong. Joratire, where are you putting him? Maybe on the left? And Lord Voldemort. We won't speak about him. Over on the right hand side, I've got concerns. I think that's realistically probably what we could expect this season, right? I think that we're going to be seeing um, the Heath Chong go out on loan slash be sold i think you should probably sell him at this point i think we, we we've had enough evidence there's been a lot enough years and enough time for us to now fairly say that chong is probably not going to make it at manchester united not probably chong won't make it at manchester united we should be selling him now anthony langa in the preseason tour i think he's he's not struggled with the intensity of eric ten Hag's football but i think he's somewhat struggled with the technicalities of eric, of eric ten Hag's football He's got the passion and the, and the enthusiasm for sure, like any youth team player would have when they come through, which is what the youth team players can bring. But as a backup to Sancho, I've got concerns about Anthony Langer over in that position there. I really do. And I think Eric Ten Hag would as well. We need more attackers. We need more attackers inside this squad before the season starts. And going up front, as it stands, right? This is, re this is realistically what it is. Ronaldo is not first choice at Manchester United anymore. Now, there might be Ronaldo fanboys down here going, oh my God, so I'm maybe putting Martial in front of him. I've seen a disciplinarian in Eric Ten Hag work with his squad, work with his team, and do everything in preseason. And I've seen Martial put a shift in. I've seen Martial really impress, and I've seen Martial score the goals and suit this system. Martial deserves currently his place there as our number one, number nine. With Ronaldo behind him in the pecking order. Now maybe that completely changes. And that would completely change if Ronaldo stays. And Ronaldo gets his fitness up over the next few weeks. Of course that probably changes. But right now. That there is what it is. And I suppose if you were to. As I say. if In my opinion. If I was to look at the biggest weakness inside this squad. I think it might come as no surprise. That's the worst line ever. But I'm leaving it. You can deal with it. I'm going to go for that position there. I'm definitely going to say that that's a bit of a weakness. Why is that so far below where I'm clicking? That's weird. Uh, I'm going to go that as a weakness there. I'm going to go for Ilanga as a weakness on the right-hand side there. And we, uh, depending on what happens with Ronaldo, of course, we need more inside there. I would say they're my concerns. The biggest concern is around that defensive midfield position. I'm concerned about the backup to Delo. Definitely. I'm concerned about our right centre-back, concerned about the right wing and the depth that we've got there behind Sancho. And I don't know what's going on up front. But for me, that's that's my opinion on this. Like Looking through every single player inside this Manchester United team, all the forwards there, all the midfielders and the midfielders we don't have, and of course, all the defenders. Now you can let me know what you think about that and what you think about this squad overall and the concerns that I've sort of put out. Do you agree with him? Do you not agree with him? Do you think that's Manchester United's strongest 11? Because I think it is with De Gea in goal, with Malasia, with Martinez and Maguire, with Delo, a midfield three of Fred Eriksson and Bruno, with Rashford and Sancho on the wings and Martial up front. For me, that's the best 11 I think that we can conceivably put out if everybody's fit and ready. 
But you let me know what you think in the comments below. As I say, this is the first video in the week of season preview content. Tomorrow, I'm going to do my full Premier League predictions, including where I think United will finish. Then on Wednesday, going to be taking a look at Eric Ten Hag's full coaching staff now that that's been completed. Thursday, going to take a look at Man United's, uh, my Man United predictions for the whole season, including the Premier League and Europa League, FA Cup, League Cup, top scorer, top assist player of the season. And then on Friday, we've got our Brighton 11. Mate, it's a, the season's starting now. All the build-up that we've had, all the excitement of pre-season, now we can start really building up to it. And I hope you're going to be part of it. But let me know what you think about that as A, the best 11, and be where your concerns lie in terms of the strength in depth of this squad because we need a squad this season. And the World Cup makes it even more... You let me know what you think in the comments, as I'm sure you will.